Welcome to Trialsite News Podcast Series. Today, we'll be expanding on a subject we covered at trialsitenews.com back in January about rationalizing study startup budgeting and contracting with RTP-based Clinistart. Now, the research triangle-based Clinistart represents a fascinating new wave of innovative cloud-based service providers designed to accelerate clinical trial site activation and study startup, contributing to what hopefully are more efficient and cost-effective studies. The goal of which is to accelerate each step of the clinical trials process, which in turn would bring the availability of medicine sooner for patients, which is a noble and important goal. And so to talk with us about this, we have Clinistart founder Sam Searcy here with us. And so, Sam, welcome. Morning. Thank you. It's good to be here. The pleasure is ours. Now, Sam, thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to speak with us. Uh, We're always encouraged by entrepreneurs and glad to have you on to discuss your company, Clinistart. Thank you. I appreciate that. You know, we started this company about, uh, well, a year ago now um, it's been going. And this is really my second foray into the CRO adjacent space. Uh, So I was previously a co-founder of ClinTrax back in 2012, 2013, uh, which was then later sold to uh, the Copernicus Group. And ClinTrax did a lot of things that we do as well here at Clinistart. And as you mentioned in the opening, um, that is handling the investigator site contract and budget functions all the way from uh, development, template development, or synthesizing the budget out of the, out of the protocol uh, to the negotiation and completion of those functions. Um, one of the things I thought after we sold ClinTrax that we could improve upon is to really focus more on the technology piece. And that's what we've done here at Clinistart. So we, we like to say we started with the end user and then backed our way into the technology. So in addition to being able to perform these tasks of contract and budget creation, development and negotiation, um, we have also have created a first in class uh, software tool that is just for clinical trial site contracts. And um, we're very excited about this product. It's called Catalyst. And it actually automates the the process to the extent possible, uh, which cuts out a lot of the unnecessary delay uh, and helps facilitate faster negotiation processes. The way we do this, we built it on top of the Salesforce platform, force.com. And we were able to integrate a plugin directly into Outlook. So everybody in the CRO industry or the CRO adjacent space, we all work out of Outlook. Uh, And we knew that if negotiators had to move from their email system and Outlook to a separate system, typically CTMS, to update the status of where they are, uh, lots of times that doesn't happen. It falls through the cracks. And so by integrating this function into the, the actual email, everything's captured. Every email iteration, templates, uh, what have you. And then that data feeds into a dashboard that uh, our sponsors, CRO partner sites, whomever can take a look at and always know where their work is. Now, what got you to make the move to launch this company? What was the gaping hole or gap in the market? I still think there is a gap, a skills gap in the contract and budget piece um, in the industry. And let me kind of explain that a little bit. So really there, there are several sides here, right? You've got the sponsor side, you have the CRO side, and we have the sites. I am still of the opinion, not to be critical, but I think we're able to perform this function better because it's our core competency. And that's what our customers and our clients are seeing about our service offerings and our ability to get through this process faster. I still think some organizations that haven't made the decision to outsource this, some of them do have good contract and budget departments. But many of them, it's still very bureaucratic, and that bureaucracy slows things down. And, you know, if you're on the CRO side, your sponsors are always wanting things to get started up as quickly as possible. Time is literally money uh, in the startup space. Now, you, as you mentioned, your focus is on uh, contracts and budget, which is often right. done by CROs. Are you going to be competing with them? It's interesting because some of our clients are CROs. Uh, Some of them have decided to just outsource the function completely since we're experts and this is our core competency. Um, Others of them, including some larger CROs, have decided to utilize us for overflow work. So resourcing is always a challenge, right, in the clinical research field. You either have too many people and some of them are sitting around maybe not necessarily fully utilized, 
or you have too few people and everyone's overutilized. And I think we fill that gap. So we alleviate that resourcing pressure from these companies and they find that very helpful. That way they don't have to pay resources uh, if they don't have work for them to do. Now, traditionally, small research centers are more favorable to sponsors and CROs. Is this still the case? I think it's absolutely the case. I mean, we see sometimes the bureaucracy of um, institutional sites. It, it's really an impediment. And I think what is fascinating, I'm still seeing a tremendous amount of consolidation among uh, independent research sites, whether they are forming into networks or site management organizations. I mean, I can tell you just in the first six weeks of this year, I bet I've had six, seven calls uh, from individuals who are starting SMOs. So I feel like there is a large uptick and a bit of consolidation among the site space. And I think that's wonderful because I think we're going to see the industry, at least from the site perspective, produce some more efficiencies, right? It, it's more efficient for sites to join together and to share in the business operations or uh, to utilize a company like ours to do the contracts and budgets. And then they can focus on the site or the, uh, the science and the patient recruitment. Um, so it's something to keep an eye on, but I, I think there'll be continued specialization and groupings of these SMOs throughout this year and next. Right. And, a more, and the more efficient that they are, the better it is for patients in the long run. 100%. Now, can you share with the Trial Site News audience what big sponsors and CROs look most for in a site? Well, I, I think that hasn't changed a lot in the past couple of years. So they're looking for a couple of things. They're looking for sites that can navigate the study startup piece quickly and efficiently. They're looking for sites that can meet enrollment goals. Um, and I think there's a trend toward towards patient centricity. You know, we're really trying to focus on the patient here, making sure we're recruiting the right people and hitting those enrollment goals. On paper, it looks very simple. I think at the end of the day, it's more of kind of art and science coming together. Um, and I think it's a lot about relationships and maintaining and fostering those good relationships. Now let's shift over. I want to talk about trends with sites. What do you see and uh, what do you see and how will this new venture capitalize on these trends? We are certainly seeing a move um, toward sites utilizing companies like ours to help them with the site contracts piece. So we have two completely separate teams within our organization, within our company. Um, that, that are completely conflict screened. We have the site facing component and then we have the CRO and sponsor component and the two never speak to each other. We even have them running on different software systems to make sure we have that conflict screen in place. But with our sites, we're seeing that as we reach out, as we build that book of business, um, they are so relieved to know that there's a company they can turn to to help with this contract and budget piece. What we have seen, lots of study nurses, a few more sophisticated sites may have one person that just does contracts and budgets, but they rarely come from the CRO or sponsor side having previous experience. Um, so I think we're gonna continue to see a trend of companies like ours emerging to provide these specialized services to help the sites become more efficient. No, there has also been a lot of private equity money coming into sites. Tremendous. Do you think that that will change the landscape? I do. I think you're going to see more consolidation, kind of what we're seeing in the CRO space. Um, you know, I mentioned earlier, I've had several calls come in just this year with uh, physicians and investigators creating new investigative sites. Many of them have already lined up private equity money. Um, so I am literally seeing the private equity money come in and help with the creation of these SMOs and site networks. And that is going to reshape the industry. Now, what other trends do you see forthcoming? That's a great question. I think with the, in the light of the COVID pandemic, I think we're going to continue to see trends in remote monitoring. Um, I think we're going to continue to see trends in AI and how that can be applied to data to try to figure out, you know, where are the right patients to recruit? Um, what are those therapeutic areas looking like? Um, and I think we'll continue to see a greater development and, and um, emphasis on apps, just straight apps from your phone uh, that help with doing everything from recording data 
uh, again, to patient recruitment. Well, it's always good to look into that crystal ball. That's right. That's right. Now, before we let you go today, any final thoughts on the state of research, clinical trials, and site management? I think it's just, it's still, you know, this is an industry I've been in now for 12 years. I still find it thrilling. Uh, I think that it's very rewarding to see uh, the work that was done. I mean, again, going back to the, to the COVID-19 pandemic and the creation of the vaccine program, it's astonishing to see how quickly that moved. And it's encouraging because now we know research, clinical research can move at a breakneck speed when we want to. Um, and I think that we're just going to continue to see the trends in consolidation. It's still a fragmented industry, even among the CROs, certainly among the sites. Um, and I think we're going to see a lot more um, merger and acquisition activity over the next 24 months. Of course, we just saw yesterday the announcement of PRA Health Sciences and ICON. I used to work at PRA Health Sciences years ago. I think that's an exciting um, event in the industry. But while two giants are merging to create a large clinical research organization, I feel like I've seen three or four smaller CROs pop up just this year. So it's kind of a never ending cycle of uh, the creation and the, um, the fragmentation and then the coming together of these larger companies. Well, Sam, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. We greatly appreciate you taking the time out of your day. Thank you. Appreciate it.